Hey guys, welcome to Suburban Brewer. My name is Travis. On this episode, we're going to talk about the uh, Grandfather Sparge Water Heater and some of the modifications I've made to it, uh, including gallon increments on the sight glass, and, as well as uh, an option for flow control. So uh, if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Welcome back. So I want to preface this story by basically saying, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate in the comments on this uh, from my fellow brewers uh, in Europe that use the metric system. Why would I take a good sight glass and change it from liters to gallons? Well, I do have a couple of reasons for that. So flow control is huge. Uh, I've, I've always been uh, having to monitor the sparge by taking my, uh, my pitcher and fill it up with the sparge water and pour it over the grain bed, which was very daunting at times when you want to be able to do other things during your brew day. So the only other thing I've done was put half inch silicone hose on the spigot and uh, you can either have it fully closed or fully open and uh, you still have to do some sort of babysitting on that type of sparge. So my idea was I wanted to repurpose the existing sight glass and uh, buy out you know, as, as few pieces as I needed to, to kind of build uh, my own sight glass and flow control solution and um, with an added benefit that I was going to recalibrate for gallons. All right, so we'll get into kind of my, uh, my little bulkhead here. What's great about this, everything is stainless steel minus my little, um, my little nylon uh, barb to NPT fitting right here. So the inside you have a half inch nipple, um, high temp silicone gasket and a half inch nut and basically threaded that nipple as far as I could into the T and got a real tight seal. You don't want to over tighten on the inside. You don't want to compress that gasket too much that you will get some kind of leakage. So make sure that you tighten it just enough. Um, get, give it a couple turns with a crescent wrench and, uh, and call it a day. Uh, I did notice when I did tighten it too much, I did get some leakage out of the, uh, the T right here, but it, I do get a nice solid fit. So I will say I did have to bore out the hole size uh, from roughly like a 3 8 um, pipe size to a uh, uh, 13 16 which I find works well for half inch NPT fittings. So from there, you have your half inch NPT. This is 304 stainless uh, and a half inch mini ball valve. You can get these on Amazon. Uh, I think I got the T, the valve on Amazon and this 3 8 to half inch NPT. This is the only modification I had to do. So I had to, I picked this up from Home Depot by the way. It's quarter inch barb to half inch NPT. And what I had to do was, if you notice, I had to cut it down. So there were a couple of extra barbs here. I cut two of the barbs off um, because I noticed it went too far up into the sight glass and I just didn't need that much. So I did have to take a little tube cutter and I, um, I ended up chopping two of those barbs off to get a good fit, not too tall. And also to get this to fit flush, to screw in here flush, I had to shave off uh, some of the threads. So I took the same tubing cutter and I uh, chopped off about a, I wanna say a quarter inch of the threads so that I could throw some thread tape on and really grind this um, and get this to, to fit flush. Any height that I have here is going to raise that sight glass up um, to where it's gonna be past the, uh, the kettle. So I didn't want that. I wanted it to be uh, as low as possible. All right, so here's a sight glass. I think it's a uh, polycarbonate tubing that they use for this. So what I did was I took an SOS pad and I just kind of did some scrubbing until I could get the, the leaders uh, markings off. And it actually didn't leave too much scarring there. Uh, I figured I was just gonna roll that to the back anyways, and it wasn't gonna make that much of a difference. So when you, um, when you take it off of the original setup, you have these little 
these little gaskets here that kind of slide in and uh, like so, which they kind of want to bunch up a little bit. So, which this slides onto that little, uh, that little black barb inside of the original grandfather spigot. So um, I realized that I could use a quarter inch barb to get that to slide onto and I could get this to work really well doing this one handed here. So yeah, this kind of slides up through the top, which we're gonna still use this bracket here. And basically I can get it to pop onto my little quarter inch bar up here pretty well. And um, it takes a little bit of finagling here, but you get the point. So I get a good tight seal there and and this is just going to kind of sit on top of that gasket if I wasn't doing it one-handed I would work it on just a little bit more but you get the point and basically we're done all right so here you will notice um, my gallon increments here so one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five. So when you first buy this, you know, they tell you it has a 4.35 gallon capacity, which actually uh, this thing, if you fill it up to this max line right here, it is roughly five gallons. So it's, I think, uh, just right above five gallons. So if you take five gallons as being the max, and their max as being 4.35 gallons, you have a discrepancy of 0.65. If you're gonna make this adjustment, 0.4 is your dead space that you won't get in a fly sparge setup, and there's an extra 0.25 gallons that gets either caught up here in this, uh, uh, in the spigot T and in the sight glass, as well as um, some still in the kettle that uh, runs out. So if you're doing this adjustment using this, I would recommend um, using 0.65 as your dead space. It's all, it, honestly, it's good to keep that dead space uh, to make sure that your element's not gonna run dry in this. Um, and if, if you're not worried about it, you just add the extra water, let it run off, um, you know, set your, set the flow on your valve to what you want it to be. And then when it's out, it's out, you're done with your sparge. So I wanted to show you guys my setup here. So um, take a step back. I've got this brewing table, stainless brewing table that I've used on prior setups. So I've got my, um, my sparge water heater that sits on top of a crate um, to get, kind of give it a little bit more height when I do my sparge. So. You'll notice I've got my grandfather on the ground, um, baskets up, and this is just a little demo on the uh, the fly sparge. So right now I've got uh, about three gallons in this guy right now, and this is just my leftover, so three eighths uh, silicone hose, and um, it's got the you know your little fly sparge attachment to kind of give it a little bit of extra spray. So. When I'm ready for my sparge, what I can do is let out kind of a flow that makes sense and uh, let this kind of just sit over the grain bed and do its thing. I can go on, I can start cleaning other things. I can kind of get other things ready for my brew day. Go watch TV, grab a beer and uh, come back when this thing is basically empty. All right, well that brings this video to a close. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and uh, checking out my channel. I promise I'm gonna get to brewing some beer soon. I had just finished a Munich Hellas uh, a couple weeks ago. It's got one more week left uh, to go and I'll do the tasting and I'll wrap up the brew day and tasting in one video. Uh, I seem to like that format a little bit better so that you guys aren't watching a brew day and then waiting to see the tasting. So I promise that's on the way. There will be a lot of grandfather brew days, uh, some tips and tricks. I'll continue to do DIY stuff like this. So if you guys like that kind of thing, uh, 
uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.